So we're taking a look at the Uberti reproduction of the Remington New Army, often called the Model 1858. This is the cap and ball revolver that was originally made by Remington. It was the secondary uh, firearm for the U.S. military that um, ended up becoming the primary. And if not the primary, then at least one that was produced in very significant numbers. As you know, with a black powder firearm, this can ship just directly to um, you. You don't have to have it shipped to an FFL. So this just ships straight to me. Um, and I was able to um, actually open it up and do a proper unboxing on it. Look what we got here. Yeah. It came? Yeah, I'm oh, doing okay. a I'm doing an unboxing. Let me, uh, That's all right. All right, Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got in here. All right, got paperwork. Paperwork and stuff. Ooh, it comes in a plastic bag. There we go. Okay. So there you go. 1858 Remington. A Uberti version of it. So I guess the name 1858 is a good place to start with this. The originals had a patent date engraved on them of uh, September 14th, 1858. And that's where a lot of the modern um, people pick up the name 1858. Now that was um, a patent that had to do with uh, some of the workings on it, particularly the um, way that the uh, cylinder would come in and out of it. This didn't actually start coming along until 1861. This was, um, as I said earlier, the secondary pistol for the um, U.S. military. Um, Colt was producing the primary one, and something happened at Colt that ended up making them unable to produce um, enough firearms, and that was a fire at their plant in 1864. And so that completely stopped Colt from being able to uh, produce firearms. And of course, there's a, uh, you know, civil war going on, so they've got to have arms. So Remington ended up being able to get into a position to make a bunch of these. So we can take a look at some of the features on this here, and I'll point out some of the things that make this a little bit different than the Colt's. The biggest difference that you'll know right away from the Colt that was produced at the time would be this top strap right here. Um, the Colts don't have that, so you don't have the top strap. That makes this one big solid piece there and makes it a lot stronger. Now the Colts would disassemble. You'd have a block here you'd have to knock out and then the uh, barrel could spin off and go off of there and then that's how you would remove the cylinder on that as it would slide off at that point. Now this is one big piece that the cylinder is in the middle of. Now this particular one is made by Uberti. You've got Uberti and Pieta are the two that make these. And this one, as you can see, is made in stainless steel. Now, stainless steel would not have been something that they would have historically been made out of at that point. The nice thing for stainless on a modern one is it makes it a lot more resistant to uh, the black powder corrosion. It makes it a lot easier to clean. And even though it is a little bit anachronistic, I do like having it on there. So how would you go about loading one of these things? Well, basically to load it, you got to get into half cock. That's where the cylinder can start turning. And you'll see that you can load in powder, dump powder into the different cylinders. Line the cylinder up. 
under the rammer once you put a ball in it and then the rammer will ram a ball down in there and then once you're done ramming the balls and the powder in there you then have back here where you get to put the caps on one thing that people um will be able to see on these is how to get the cylinder in and out of it now as you can see um, from the clip of this movie here um, you can change the cylinders out pretty quick on these now course Clint Eastwood is able to do it um, a lot better than I can what you have to do first is you have to bring the rammer down now you don't want to bring the rammer down so far that it goes into um, the cylinder there because it's never going to be able to go out so it's got to be kind of hanging out around there you then got this piece here that slides forward you put this at half conk and then she will just slide right out there just kind of rolls out that way the thing that makes this difficult to get in is going to be the hand that's located right there that um, you can't push down on it and get it to go away but if you push up on the hand it will slide inside you basically have to put it in and kind of turn that way so that um, teeth on the back of that will push the hand up and then once it gets into there kind of slide that way to get in kind of rolling it in here and then once it gets in there into the spot you can kind of work it until that gets in there and there it goes so that's the first way to do it now the other way to do it i haven't seen anyone else do it this way it's just something i kind of discovered and maybe there's a reason you don't do it this way i don't know i don't know that there's a problem with this but that would be to decock it here and what that does is that just gets the uh hand completely out of the way there so then it's just a matter of just uh slide it in like that and it goes right in quick now one thing you notice when it comes to you from uh you birdie is that it is oily in that bag like it is more oily than any gun i have ever had and that oil isn't really the type of oil that you want to keep on it there you'd rather have um, something else on there for shooting it so you're going to want to get all that off of there and after that you could start um, putting on uh, ballastol on it and doing that which is what i recommend the oil these with ballastol or when you clean it use a mix of ballastol and water the ballastol and the water kind of mix together um, into this um, kind of whitish colored uh, stuff that you can spray on it called moose milk by a lot of people and the nice thing on that is that the water will evaporate and it just kind of leaves an oil behind it which then protects it so this is a six shot revolver but the question is should you load six or should you load five now this is an argument that you see a lot with the um, single action army that with those you would always load five cylinders in there and leave one of them empty because you'd have the hammer sitting on a primer and you don't want a bump setting off around when you don't mean to well you could have the same thing here with the hammer sitting on a percussion cap um, that's why they came up with these little notches right here on the cylinders little notches between each of the nipples that you would put a cap on and what you can do is pull back the hammer a little bit just do a partial turn and then let it off and now it's just resting right there in one of those grooves and not resting on a nipple so if you had caps on all these it wouldn't be sitting on a cap and so it would actually be safe to carry you're going to see me load six with it um, because i'm either immediately shooting or putting it to rest on one of the uh, little safety slots in here and the safety slots do hold it really well i mean it's not coming out of that easy don't leave it um, sitting around um, 
you know, sitting on a live primer or sitting around cocked um, because it is a pretty light trigger on this. Now the instruction booklet that comes with this, it looks like they've pretty much got one instruction booklet that they send with all of their revolvers um, from you, Birdie. But it tells you the different powder charges to put in there. Now what I have used on it are, um, since this is a 44 caliber, I've used the 454 diameter balls. They do make some 457s and I may try those next and just see how those do. But if you're using round balls, it says to use between 22 and 30 grains. Now the powder flask that I'm using has a spout on it that's designed to measure out 30 grains. Um, in reality, that'll get you somewhere around 27 or 28, which will be you know, between the 22 and the 30 that they recommend you to use. And a couple other things for shooting these. I had looked at what caps it recommended to put on these. And I had seen both Remington number 10 and CCI 11. Additionally, um, besides the powder and the uh, balls and the caps, you also want to have something in there on each of the cylinders in there to prevent a chain fire. What you don't want to have happen is the powder in this one go off and that causing the um, powder in one of these other ones down in there to go off. So you want to use either a wad or some sort of lube to put in there over it there. Additionally, as far as getting the caps onto the nipples there, a lot of times you can use a capper to put those on there. Now, a capper is kind of a modern thing, but it's they're pretty popular. Um, the problem with the um, Remington New Army and the capper is that uh, they don't work. That there's not enough room in there the way that these are made to fit a capper in there. So you're not going to be able to buy a capper and stick them in there. You're going to have to put them on by hand. Now you can, and there's videos out there if you feel like doing this, um, you can take the nipples out with a nipple wrench and then you can use a Dremel tool and open that up and get it to where you can put um, the caps on there. So that looks like that's not an issue to do that. Um, I haven't. So now that we've gone over all that, well, let's go out and see if we can shoot this thing. All right, we're gonna start with putting the powder in here. I'm gonna put in 30 grains. Um, this says it's 30 grains. So puts out closer to about 25 or 27 but in theory 30 grains of Goax black powder right there we'll fill it up you let off now we got powder in here there's 30 grains of powder now put our ball in it Rotate this over one cylinder there. Now I'm going to take this and we're going to cram that down in there. Since I'm not using patches because my patches uh, have gone somewhere and haven't shipped to me, I'm going to use bore butter on it here. Bore butter does help keep the bore clean, but it will also uh, let you uh, seal it up good if you don't have uh, any patches on there. It there till it looks good and clean. And 
And finally, we're going to start putting caps on these. Okay, here we go. I think I missed that one. Okay, I was told that the uh, CCI 11 caps fit this well, but um, they seem to be falling off. At, a lot of them are kind of popping half loose after being fired, jamming. It's just, it's not really working well there with these caps. Um, I'm gonna may have to try to find some others or look at what else to do to get these on there, but it's not quite right at the moment. All right, so as you can see, I ran into a few problems my first time out there shooting it. Now I went on there and I did some reading and found what I think I need to do to get this to work better next time. Um, it was also something that was mentioned here in the manual if you bother to, you know, actually read your manual. Okay, so what I've been told to try with the uh, primers is to give them a little bit of a pinch and then stick it on there and then that will help, help it hold on to the nipple on the revolver a little better. So I'm going to try that. I've also brought a little dowel to help me. So, slight pinch. Pinch. Alright, so we got them all on here. Let's see if they stay on any better this time. Hey, looks like they are. That really looked like it there. Just had to give the uh, nipples a little pinch before you stick them on there. Don't go take and pinch nipples out of context. No. And so that time it went a lot better. As you can see, the caps are all staying on well and not falling off. Now the reason it's recommended to use a stick instead of your fingers, um, they always used fingers back in the day and you're probably fine to do it, but if you ever were to push one wrong and the cap were to go off, the cap has a good bit of explosive force on it and you don't want your thumb right on a cap when it explodes. And the easiest way to clean these is going to just be um, soap and water basically. You can like literally take the cylinder out, take the grips off and like just put soap and water on it, drop the cylinder inside a thing of soap and water, um, and then just go over all this with it um, with a toothbrush and a towel and you'll get it clean pretty quick. And so that's what I've got on this here. This is the first cap and ball revolver that I have ever bought. And so, I'm going to keep putting more through this, and as I shoot it more, I'll let you know what I think about it.
Well, if you found this video useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and a like. You can go down into the comment section and leave any thoughts you have down there. And if you're interested, you can also subscribe to my channel and click the little bell notification to make sure that you catch all the videos that I post so you don't miss anything. I'm Jeremy with Poindexter G, and we'll see you next time.